may seem a little gloom outside, but guess what? In here, we're doing some work. We're doing some math. We're going to try to achieve those goals. So stay tuned for some more practice of Algebra 1 and Algebra 2 foundational skills. Hello everyone and welcome back. This is Audrey Codner Gibson from ACG Math Tutoring coming back to you trying to get on those Algebra 1, Algebra 2 skills to get you ready for whatever you want to achieve. So as always I'm going to share my screen and we are going to work on determining the slope intercept equation of a line. So we worked on doing the transformation from standard form to slope intercept form so now we're gonna work a little bit more with that slope intercept form, but we're gonna look at it as the equation of the line. So we got the common core standards of A, C, E, D point one, A, R, E, I point three, and A, R, E, I point 10. So before we get started, we're gonna review that exit ticket that we left off last time. So we have to go from standard form to slope intercept form. So in order for us to do that, that means we need to solve this equation for y. So y is going to stay right where it is. And then this 4x, I have to do that inverse operation, which is subtracting 4x on both sides. So 4x minus 4x gives me 0. And I don't need that placeholder of 0 since I still have my y. And then I can write it out as negative 4x plus 3. Or I could write it out as 3 minus 4x. As long as you know that that negative 4 is your slope because it's adjacent to your x and that 3 is your constant and that's going to be your y-intercept. So now I have my equation of the line, either this one or this one, and then we're going to graph. So we'll start at our y-intercept. In this case my y-intercept is 3. So whatever the constant is, the one that does not have the x, that is going to be your starting point. So now I'm looking at my slope. So my slope in this case is negative 4. So anytime you have a whole number, it's always going to be over 1. So from my y-intercept, I'm going to go down 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So I'm at negative 1. And then I'm going to go to the right 1. So I know we talked a little bit last time when my four could be over a negative one. So starting at my y-intercept, I go up one, two, three, four, and over to the left one. So that point is also on that line. So we just have to remember with negative slopes, you have to have just a negative sign under one. So it's either going to be in the numerator or it's going to be in the denominator, okay? So it can't be in both because that's telling me it's a positive slope. So what we're working on today, you should be able to answer this question or a statement. I can determine the slope and y-intercept in the equation of a line, okay, algebraically, graphically, numerically, and verbally. And you're like, wow, that's a lot of leads. Okay, so algebraically, we're actually going to be either finding our slope, so we're actually going to do that y2 minus y1. Graphically, it's just like what we did. We have starting our y-intercept, and then we're using our slope to graph. Numerically is looking at a table, and then verbally is actually looking at through word problems. But I'm thinking today we're going to be looking at the first two, which is algebraically and graphically. Okay, so this is going to be a part two. All right? so. Let's get with our helpful hints. So, y-intercept form is that y equals mx plus b. So you can use this form one of two ways. When they give you a slope and a point, or when they give you two points. So like we saw the last time, it seems like it's a lot easier when you find, or when you try to graph when you have it in that slope-intercept form, as opposed to standard form. So, here we go with a couple of examples. So I think I like to get it when we get best with examples. So we're going to find the equation of the line in slope-intercept form that has a slope of four and passes through the point three, one. And then we're gonna graph our line. 
So they gave us two things. They gave us our slope, which is equal to four, and they also gave us our X and Y value that we're going to use in our slope intercept form. So we could go ahead graphically by plotting our point 3, 1. So here's 3, 1, boom. And then you can probably see, hmm, can I do the slope um, rise over run from here? Maybe, but let's be sure. So let's look at it algebraically, okay? So if I have my equation, my y equals mx plus b. They gave us the x and the y, and they also gave us the m that we can substitute into this formula, okay, into this equation. So for my y, I'm going to put a 1. For my m, it's going to be a 4. And since that m is being multiplied to the x, I'm going to replace the x with a 3. And then I'm going to bring down my plus b. So it looks like we're going to be solving this equation for b, which is right. They gave us a slope, but now we need to know what the b is, the y-intercept. So we got 4 times 3, which gives me 12. And then I bring everything down. So I want to get b by itself. So what's in the way is this positive 12. So I have to do the inverse, which is subtract 12. So 12 minus 12 gives me 0. But again, don't have to put that placeholder because I still have b left over. So now 1 minus 12 gives me negative 11. So my y-intercept, where I'm going to start on the y-axis, is at negative 11, which is roughly down here. Okay? So now, if I can put it together in that slope-intercept form, I got my slope, which is 4, and I have my y-intercept, which is 11. So from this point, I'm going to go up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and over 1. If I continue with this pattern, 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1, 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1. <gasps> Look at that. I'm actually at that point 3, 1 that we talked about. So you can actually create your lines just by continuing on with the pattern. 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1. 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1. And notice, if I connect or try to, as best I can, to go through all these points, I was able to graph my line. So you're probably saying, well, Ms. Gibson, couldn't I just graph 3, 1, and then from there, just go up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1 to draw two points and then draw my line and see where it intersected on the y-axis? You could have done that, okay? But if they're asking for some finding the equation, we needed two things. We needed the equation, and then we also needed to graph it. All right? So for the next one, same situation. So we're going to find the equation, all right, using a slope of negative 3, and it's passing through the point 4, negative 4. So here's my origin, going over 4, and then down 4. So I'm looking for an equation line that's going to go through that point, and it's going to go using my slope of negative 3. So again, they gave me the m, and they also gave me my x and my y. So if I use my formula, I'm going to replace my y. In this case, it's going to be a negative 4. My m, which is a negative 3 my x, which came from my order pair, which is 4, and I bring down my plus b. So now I have negative 4 is equal to negative 12, because negative 3 times 4 gives me negative 12, plus b. So in this case, this time I'm going to add 12 to both sides. So these can cancel out, but again, don't need that placeholder of 0, because I still have the b on that side. So now I have a negative 4 plus 12, so that means I'm doing subtraction, which gives me a positive 8. So my y-intercept is going to be at positive 8, which should be right up here. So I want to see if, with the y-intercept, 
of negative eight and a slope, I mean, of, of positive eight and a slope of negative three, will it cross this line or will it cross this point at four, negative four? Okay, getting kind of confused with lines and points today. I don't know. So let's see. If I start at my y intercept, I'll go down three, one, two, three. But since I go down three, I'm going to the right one. So remember, it will be negative three over one. That's going to be my slope. So if I go down one, two, three over one, one, two, three over one. Oh, I'm so nervous. One, two, three over one. So it does, it crosses that. So if I try as steady as I can, okay, with the ruler going down, I can actually see my line. When I read it from left to right, it's actually going downwards. So yes, here's my equation of the line, which is y equals negative 3x plus 8. And then graphing my line, I found my y-intercept, and then I used my slope, which was negative 3 over positive 1, to draw my graph. Let's try the next one. So for this one, we're trying to find the equation of the line in that slope-intercept form that passes through point 2, 1, and negative 1, negative 3. So what's different? This time we got two points. So we got two points to choose from. However, we're missing our slope. So this is when we're going to have to go back into our lovely little minds to find the equation, or basically to find the formula for slope. So since this is my first point, this is my x1 and my y1. This is my x2 and my y2. So I'm going to plug that information in so I can find my slope. So now we have negative three minus one and negative one minus two. So negative three minus one gives me a negative four and negative one minus two gives me negative three. So remember, a negative divided by a negative is a positive. So if I simplify this fraction, it will give me a positive four thirds. That's going to be my slope. That's going to be my M. So now I have to make a choice. Which of the two points am I going to use? Does it matter which point do I use? Well, let's see. I'm going to use the first point. So I'm going to do my y equals mx plus b. And I'm going to use that first point to 1. So the 1 is representing my y. The 4 thirds is going to represent my slope. And I'm going to multiply that by my x, which is 2 and I bring down my plus b. So now I got one equals, four thirds times two gives me eight thirds plus b. So now I'm gonna subtract eight thirds on both sides. But if you recall, when you have a whole number, adding or subtracting a whole number with a fraction, they have to have a common denominator. So that means I need to change this number of one to a fraction that's going to have a denominator of three. So let's think of it this way. What divided by three will equal one? Or you can think of it this way. What's three times one? Three. So three thirds is equivalent to one. So now I can actually do the subtraction. So I got my B. So now we have negative five thirds. Because remember, the denominator is still going to be the same, but the numerator, that's when you're actually going to do the operation. So three minus eight gives me a negative five. So this is going to be my B. But will I get the same answer if I chose the other point? Well, let's see. So we have my negative three. That's going to be my Y. My slope is still going to be 4 thirds, and my x is negative 1 plus b. So now we got negative 3 is equal to negative 4 thirds plus b, because we multiply the negative 1 with the 4. So that means I'm going to add 4 thirds to both sides. 
because negative four thirds and a positive four thirds, that will give me my zero. So since I still got that B over there, I don't need to put that placeholder of zero. So now I have a denominator. That means I need to change this three to something with a denominator of three. So I can think of it this way. What divided by three will give me negative three? Because I got my negative all to the side. Or we could just simply do, what's three times negative three? Negative nine. That goes right on top. So now my denominator is still going to be a three. So what's negative nine plus four? Gives me a negative five. So no matter which of those two points you pick, you're going to get the same answer. So my equation of the line, just to finish it up, is y equals 4 thirds x minus 5 thirds. So you're probably saying, all right, how are we going to graph that? So 5 thirds, we're actually going to do some division. So it's like one point something. Okay, It's a little bit more, right? So it's between one and two. So since it's negative, it's going to fall somewhere between here. So from this point, I'm going to use my slope, which is four thirds. So that means I'm going up full steps. So the next step up is going to be between zero and one, negative one, sorry. The next step up is going to be between zero and one. The next step up is going to be between one and two. So when you move your steps, you're making full steps, okay? So we go up one, two, three, four, which is between two and three, and then over three, one, two, three. Okay. If you want, you can plot your points. Two, one, which is right here, and negative one, negative three, which is right here. And if you notice, those points are on the same line. Okay, so you got that positive slope going. All right, so this one was a little more challenging because we had to deal with the fractions. But let's go with another practice. See? All right, so we're going to actually find this. Let me move myself out the way. So again, two points. So we need to find our slope. So if we do my y2, which is 7, minus my y1, which is 1, over my x sub 2, which is 9, minus 3. 7 minus 1 gives me 6. 9 minus 3 also gives me 6. 6 divided by 6 can be reduced, which is 1. So my slope in this case is 1. So I'm going to show it with both of the points but remember, when you do this in your practice, in your own practice, you only need just one, okay? So if I'm going to do my y equals mx plus b, so I'm going to replace, I'm going to use this first point, so my y is 1, my slope is 1, my x is 3, and we're going to find our b. So 1 equals 3 plus b. So I'm going to subtract 3 on both sides because we need to do the inverse, which gives me a negative 2 to represent my b. Okay, so that's for the first point. So now we're going to try to use it with the other point. So if I have my y equals mx plus b, so I'm going to use my second point. So my y is 7, but my slope is still the same, which is 1. My x is 9. And then I bring down my plus b. So now we have 7 is equal to 1 times 9, which is 9, plus my b. And that means I'm going to subtract 9 on both sides, which gives me negative 2. So this is just to show you that you can pick either one of those points to represent your x and your y, and you're still going to get the same answer. So now let's get our equation. So my equation is going to be y is equal to 1x minus 2. Or you can just simply write it as y equals x minus 2. Okay? The 1 is assumed to be in front of the x if you see it or you don't. All right? 
So starting at negative two, that was my y-intercept. So that means my slope is a positive one. So I'm going to go up one and to the right one, up one and to the right one. So let's see if I go up one to the right one. Hey, there's that point three one. Okay, so that's being crossed. The other point is going to be nine seven. So if I continue on this path, I should cross that point. Ooh, and I do. So okay. So here's the equation line that goes through those two points of three, one and nine, seven. All right. So Woohoo! Okay, so hopefully you're getting. This is how we did it algebraically and graphically. So the next video I'm going to show you is going to be how we get it numerically and verbally. So this is going to be a two parter, okay? So we already reviewed our exit ticket. We looked at the guided notes. We looked at the practice. Now we're going to get with our little exit ticket. So for today's exit ticket, I don't know why it says review, but here we are. So today's exit ticket I want you to do is to find the equation of the line that passes through those points, negative four, negative three, and negative eight, negative seven, and then try to graph it, okay? So as usual, this has been very fun, and I'm so glad you're getting a lot of information out of it, and hopefully everything is going very well. If you have any questions or concerns, please comment. So far, I've been getting a lot of positive comments, which is good, but if there's some things that you need to improve on or there's some questions that you need to ask me, don't worry about it. Comment. I'll respond. All right? So if anything, if you're new to this channel, please like, subscribe, and share because I really want as many people as possible to really understand that you can do math. Come on now, people. Sometimes it's hard, but guess what? It just takes another person just to break it down for you. All right, and if anything, have a good one, and I will talk to you guys later. Take care.